New York Giants Hall of Fame linebacker Harry Carson joins me on today's Locked on Giants podcast. We're talking New York Giants defense, Daniel Jones, all things Giants. Plus, we're going to take a look at his contributions to the TCJ Fund and his upcoming honor by the nonprofit later this week. All of that and more on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily New York Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, New York Giant fans, and welcome to another edition of the Locked On Giants podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast family, your team every day. My name is Patricia Chena, and today's episode of the Locked on Giants podcast is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. And on today's Locked on Giants podcast, I'm very honored to have the amazing Harry Carson on the program. Harry Carson, of course, a Hall of Fame inside linebacker for the New York Giants, a pro bowler, a Super Bowl champion, a wonderful human being, a philanthropist, and a guy who's been very actively involved in a variety of different uh, initiatives, most importantly, or amongst them, I should say, the TCJ Fund, which supports the uh, children who are stricken by cancer and their families. And of course, that foundation is run by former Giants head coach, Tom Coughlin. So Harry came on the program with me. We talked about the Giants, the defense, Daniel Jones, the atmosphere, and so on. We also talked a little bit about Harry's work with the TCJ Fund and this honor that he's going to be getting this week in the uh, Champion for Children's Gala, which is scheduled for October 21st at Cipriani's in New York City. If you want information about it, you can go to tcjfund.org and find everything you need to know right there. So without further ado, let's bring you the interview with Giants Hall of Fame inside linebacker, Harry Carson. All right, Giant fans, I am very honored to be joined by this gentleman on the screen with me. He is NFL Pro, excuse me, NFL Hall of Fame linebacker, Giants legend, and also a member of the Giants broadcasting crew. He is Harry Carson also a Super Bowl champion, pro bowler, he, you name it, he's done it. He's just an amazing human being. And this coming up later this month, actually on October 21st, he's going to be honored along with his wife, Maribel, as well as a bunch of other people for their tireless efforts and work with the TCJ Fund at their Champion of Children's Gala at Cipriani's. That's going to be on October 21st. For information, you can go to the TCJ Fund to find out about tickets and whatnot. And Harry, thank you so much for the time. It's always an honor and a pleasure to have you on. It's a pleasure to be on with you. All right, Harry, before we talk about the TCJ Fund and your tireless efforts to help children who are stricken by cancer, let's talk a little Giants football. You're in the building um, quite a lot as part of your work with the Giants broadcasting crew. You've been with the Giants organization in some capacity, going back to basically when you were a young, young, young man. You're still a young man, but you know, <laughs> going back to the 70s and whatnot. Um, so you've seen different eras come through and whatnot. When you look at this culture that Brian Dable, the head coach, Joe Shane, the general manager, are, are putting in place, does it remind you any bit of, of, say, like Tom Coughlin or even what Bill Parcells had in place or Ray Perkins or any coaches that you might have, you know, covered or been a part of? Well, I can't say anything about um, Tom Coughlin. Um, you know, the guys who played under Tom Coughlin didn't necessarily like him all that much until he eased up on him a little bit and trusted, began to trust players like a Michael Strahan, um, I, I would um, probably put this, and I know this might be a little bit premature, I'll, I think I'll, I'll put this up there where with uh, Bill Parcells, you know, uh, the Giants have gone through several regimes. Um, 
And well, some of those regimes did not work very well. And I think, um, I think now I sense there is a difference in um, this regime and past regimes. Um, I, I think that the players who are playing now, many of them have not really played with one another, but they're meshing, they're getting together and and they're, they are playing competitive football. And that's the thing that I sort of look for when I'm looking at teams at the beginning of the football season. Do they compete? You know, um, regardless of whether they win or lose, do they compete? And um, I see this team as one that has bought in with the coach and the coaching staff. I think that they are uh, experiencing, um, they have a little bit more grit behind them and I think that they believe in themselves and they believe in one another. And I, I think that um, when you get players like that, um, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Obviously, injuries play a factor in, um, <clears throat> you know, especially at the beginning of football season, you know, everybody's sort of predicting who's going to do what. And, and nobody really knows. Nobody, I played the game, I didn't even know. And you look at a team and, and you think that you can beat them and they're the ones who are beating you. So everybody at the beginning of the season, anybody can, you know, be, be labeled a, a potential um, playoff team. And uh, you never know who's gonna be going to the Super Bowl. Nobody really believe that Cincinnati would be going to the Super Bowl last year. So, you know, anything can happen. Yes, indeed. And, you know, you look at this locker room and I think, you know, now when you played, you had a lot of leaders yourself, George Martin, LT, Sims. I mean, the list goes on and on. And one of the things that's very fascinating about this current Giants team is how some of these leaders, these young leaders are, are developing organically. How important is that in, the, in terms of culture? You know, we hear that word all the time, culture. And a lot of people are like, ah, that's just coach me. But it's got to be important, I would think. Yeah, I think it is. I, I think that um, the guys have to learn how to believe in one another. And, you know, there are quite a few um, captains uh, on this giant squad. And I think, you know, I, quite frankly, I've never really seen this many captains on, on, on a team, uh, on, on a Giants team, but uh, you have captains in strategic uh, locations on on team that can set the tempo for the younger guys, and um, I think those are the guys who are really the leaders. The guys who are going to be pushing the younger guys to give their all and 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 play unselfishly um, because. If everybody can come together and, and play as a unit and believe in one another, you know, this, this team can go far. And, and the culture is one which, um, plain and simple, you know, they believe in one another. And they're, they're positive and, um, you know, this coach is, you know, never before head coach, but Everybody's buying in. Well, you know, when Parcells took over, um, I knew I'm going way back, but, you know, he had never been a head coach at that time, but he had guys who bought into the program and into the system. And, um, you know, the first year didn't turn out so well, but with some changes and some tweaks and stuff, you know, during the course of, you know, the next, next year, um, 
they are, um, we rounded ourselves around and we, we started playing better. So uh, let's see what happens with, with this team. I, I think they're on the right track. And I haven't really said that in a long time, but I feel very positive about this team. And um, I wish them the very best. Yeah, I mean, not surprised. I mean, Dable comes from the Belichick tree. And you, of course, are very familiar with Coach Belichick having been your defensive coordinator and Belichick coming from that Parcells tree. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a little bit of history in there. And, you know, let, you know, speaking of the defenses and stuff like that, you know, you look at, look at the job Wink Martindale has done. You know, he has basically put out a different defense, it seems, every week. He has tailored it to the opponent as opposed, as opposed to just going with the same thing over and over again. And he always refers to his defense as positionless. So, you know, basically it conjures up the, the theory that, oh, guys have to be a jack of all trades, which sometimes when you hear that, it, it, it's, it's like, okay, it's maybe not the best approach, but yet it has worked for this defense so far. Why do you think that is? And what do you like about this defense that Wink Martindale runs? The thing that I like, and I told him this uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was at the game and um, I, I told him, I said, I like your brand of football. I, I like, as a defensive player, um, a coach being able to kind of like unleash the hounds and just get after people as opposed to reading and, and uh, you know, waiting to see where the ball is going. They play um, a rather aggressive brand of football, which is sort of what I like. I, I, I like, you know, if we can, you know, go after people and, um, you know, this, let the chips fall where they may, but you're not going to sit back and read and react the way that they've done um, in the past. And I like that. I mean, that, that goes back <clears throat> for me. Um, it sort of goes back to Again, the Parcells Belichick era, you know, we had to play within the system, but um, it, it gave us room to sort of improvise with the talent that we had. Uh, we could sort of play off of one another and um, make, make things happen on the football field. Hey, business owners, if you need to find the right people to fill your job openings, you want to go and check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so that your network can help you find the right people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so that you can quickly prioritize whom you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Giant fans, welcome back to the Locked on Giants podcast. And thanks for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you check out NFL Key Predictions every Friday on Locked on NFL. Locked on's local experts give you the inside scoop on the five biggest games of the NFL weekend, including Sunday and Monday night football. Plus, betting advice from the field's leading experts, Bet Online, is there to help you plan your bets wisely. Follow NFL key predictions every Friday on Locked on NFL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. And now let's get back to my interview with Harry Carson, Hall of Fame inside linebacker from the New York Giants. Now I want to ask you about one young man in particular, Harry, and that's Kayvon Thibodeau. They're the fifth overall pick in this year's draft, a guy who they are very 
high on. Now, as we record this, Thibodeau hasn't recorded his first sack, but I think when you watch him, you can kind of see the impact that he can have on, you know, within a defense and, uh, you know, with uh, lining up across from, say, the offensive lineman and whatnot. You know, a lot of people kind of say, oh, he hasn't done anything yet, but how important is it to, to be out there and just the mere fact that your presence maybe is causing an offensive lineman to jump early or, or you know, maybe they're adjusting something? I mean, I mean it, has he had an impact, do you, do you think, so far in that regard? I don't know if he's had an impact, but I think he will. And I think that, um, you know, he's coming off of an injury. So, you know, when you're coming off of, off of an injury and you're getting into live contact, you want to be very careful about how you go out there and throw your body around. And uh, there might be some hesitancy in the way that he has played, but he's just, you know, like most of the guys who are on that defensive unit, you know, they've, they've been there since the beginning of the year. I mean, the, the season, uh, he has missed a, a few games. And I think as time goes by, he'll be able to get like a much better feel of um, what he can and cannot do. And I think he's going to be a factor. I'm, I have absolutely no concern about um, where he is now because um, I know as a player, you have to work yourself back into, you know, just being confident that that knee is going to hold up. And once you get past that and you just let it, let it all rip. So um, uh, I, I have a feeling he's going to have a pretty good year. I wouldn't say um, he's going to be a rookie of the year or anything like that, but I, I think he's going to be a contributor. And I think, you know, he's going to be a factor within the defensive unit. I think so too. I mean, certainly a lot to like about him. Now, Harry, I want to ask you about one more player before we get into the TCJ fun, and that's Daniel Jones. Now, you played with Phil Sims for the bulk of your career, and I can recall you and some of your other teammates saying that when you first came came when Phil first came in, it was like, okay, who is this guy? You were kind of a feeling out process. You weren't quite sure what you were going to get from him, and Phil turned out to be one tough, you know what. In addition to being, you know, a, a record setter at the time, you know, he owned the franchise records for a number of years before Eli Manning came along. When you look at Daniel Jones, you know, Jones has displayed some of that same toughness and considering some of the adversary that he's he's gone up against, not having consistent coaching, the offensive line, this, that, and the other thing. What does, you know, what do you see in Daniel Jones and how important is that, do you think, in terms of this culture, this this program, and the direction this team's headed? Well, I think Daniel Jones knows, and I think all Giant fans know that this is sort of a year where he has to prove himself. And um, I think that whether it's um, here or whether it's someplace else, he is going to make people sit up and look and and say that he's a he's he's a pretty decent quarterback. I'm not going to put him in the same um, category as uh, Patrick Mahomes or um, any any other you know um, uh, quarterback right now, but he is. I, I think last week, I, I think he showed a lot of people uh, what toughness is all about. You know, when um, they showed him ble bleeding <laughs> and he's still out there playing, you know, that's one of those things where it, it makes people sit up and take notice and and you, you, you see it and you're like, oh, he, you know, he is pretty tough. But um, I, I think he is not necessarily feeling pressure or anything like that, but, but I think everybody knows that he, he really does have to prove himself. And I think he wants to be here. And um, I think the coaching staff wants him to be here. I, I think, I, I know pretty certain that ownership wants him 
to be here. And uh, hopefully that will be the case. I, I think that, um, you know, as, as the team goes and, you know, he has better talent around him. He has a better offensive line. Uh, Saquon is, <laughs> is healthy. Um, you know, there's no excuse for him not to be able to thrive uh, in this situation. So hopefully, um, you know, he will remain healthy and we'll have a good year. That toughness, though, I mean, the first thing that reminded me of was Phil, because Phil used to get beaten up when he was early in his career, and he kept getting up and getting up, and ultimately it all clicked for Phil. Yeah, so, you, call that, you, you call that perseverance. Yeah. <laughs> or if you're, if you're a player and you don't know what perseverance is, you say, he's a tough MOF. <laughs> <laughs> or crazy. I've heard them, that term used as well. All right, Giant fans, we have more coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast. But first, Bet Online is the only place that offers the best information on the latest odds, contests, and player props for all your sports betting needs. No matter what sport you're into, Bet Online has you covered. Plus, they offer everything you need to know for live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait. Head on over to Bet Online today to learn more about the trends in the action. Bet Online, where the games start. All right, Harry, let's talk about the TCJ Fund. You right. and your wife, Maribel, are being honored October 21st at the Champion for Children's Gala. And uh, tell me about your involvement with supporting uh, children and their families who have been stricken by that god-awful disease, cancer. Well, I have to say that my wife is uh, a friend jumper. You know what a friend jumper is? Not familiar with the term. I'm sorry. Um, when I have a friend, mm -hmm. my wife sort of throws herself into the equation and, you know, she takes my friends away from me. So she's a, she's a friend jumper. Um, you know, I'll never forget. We were at the airport going somewhere and I get a phone call and it said Tom Coughlin and I answered the phone and uh, he said, Harry. Um, Where's Maribel? And I'm like, she's right here. <laughs> and so he was speaking with her. I'm like, what is this? Why is he calling her? Why is he calling my wife? And he doesn't want to talk to me. But anyway, um, apparently something happened and um, Tom got wind of it and it, it, it kind of showed. I, I can't really talk about it because she wants to talk about it. Uh, on the evening of the event, and she'll she'll share uh, how she got involved. But uh, she, Tom has looked at Maribel as a valuable uh, commodity to help the uh, J Fund get bigger and better. And Maribel has, I mean, she's on the advisory board. And she takes her position seriously. And, you know, as her husband, I can see sometimes, um, you know, she agonizes over, you know, if we have a, like a scholarship program and she has to look at the dossier of different young people who have battled cancer and they are in college and, you know, we have to make a distinction as to who is going to get money for a scholarship, you know, in college and so forth. And she agonizes over it because she feels like everybody should be getting money. And, you know, so she, she goes through great pain uh, during that time of the year where, uh, you know, they're looking to uh, reward uh, scholarships to, to young people who have battled cancer takes she takes that very seriously and um she started a deal where the kids who are receiving scholarships come over to the house and my our house 
and we have a nice meal together. It's, it's the young people who are scholarship recipients along with their parent or parents. And so um, she has, she has, um, <laughs> she has pimped me out <laughs> to be the cook. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's put me to work. Um, and, you know, when, when the kids come with their parents, uh, you know, I've never met these kids before. I don't know anything about them. But the mere fact that we invite them into our home and we talk with them, we hear their stories and their stories are shared with other uh, young people and what they've gone through because, you know, they've gone through kind of like football. They've gone through like experiences, different forms of cancer and so forth. And um, they are very appreciative of just being thought of enough that we would invite them into our house and and share their stories. And it, 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 it's one of those situations where we know that they will never ever forget that one day, that one dinner where we um, invite them to come and be a part of our family for, for a period of time. They'll never forget that. And so they are able to come and, you know, they see my Hall of Fame bust and pictures and uh, helmets and, um, and, you know, just Maribel and I just being Maribel and my, myself, you know, and they get to have a nice meal with their with their families and their father or, or mother or whatever, you, you know, they, like I said, it's, it's an experience that I know they will never forget. And so we wish them all the best. And uh, we've been doing this for, for a while. And when I found out that Tom wanted to recognize us um, uh, a few months ago, um, you know, I'm okay with it. And, you know, I might have some surprises up my sleeve the evening of the event, but, you know, Maribel is like really, really nervous because she's never really spoken before an audience like the J-Fun. And, um, but I'll do my best to help her through uh, any, any um, issues that she might have. She might have to help me as well because, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be an emotional time for, for both of us. Now, you've always been modest, Harry. You're, you're the type, who, as long as I've known you, you don't want the attention. You kind of do what you do behind the scenes and, yeah. you know, hope to have the impact without the fanfare. So certainly, you know, to, to be put on this stage with Maribel. I mean, something you could both share, obviously, yeah. and it'll be something I'm sure you both will never forget um, as well. Um, just, the, just the thought of, you know, being recognized like that. You know, I, I remember what you said about the, the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You're like, well, you know, you, yeah. you, you, play, you downplayed it. So just accepting this, I mean, do you struggle with something like that? Even, even though it's, you know, it sounds like it's well-deserved? Um. You know, quite frankly, it, it is, it's who we are, you know. Um, you know, having played football, you have a great platform to do so many really good things. And um, we've used our platform in such a way to make a difference in the lives of, of um, young people and families who are dealing with uh, cancer. I mean, a few years ago when my, when my son, uh, Donald, um, induct, um, he was my presenter at the Hall of Fame. Well, a lot of people didn't know at that time was Donald was undergoing um, a condition called um, aplastic anemia. And as a family, 
we had to bind ourselves together much like a team and work to uh, support Donald through his period of, of um, treatment. And so we can very much understand where these families are and what they've gone through because in a way, aplastic anemia and cancer, um, we understand that you can die from both. And we're very lucky to uh, get a second chance. Uh, these families that we have worked with, they're very lucky to have a you know, second chance. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm just happy that we're in a position to just make a difference. And um, um, to, to show these young people that we care, show the families that we care, and hopefully give them um, the incentive to keep up the fight. If, if for whatever reason, you know, the condition, you know, cancer comes back, got to be able to um, deal with the issue. And because we have had situations where, you know, cancer came back in a couple of young people. So um, it's been good um, to just be able to brighten the lives of, of young people who they were just sort of minding their own business and then all of a sudden the big C sort of creeps in there and it, it turns uh, a family's life upside down. And the, uh, Tom Coughlin, J Fun, um, helps to create some stability so that the family can focus on their, their young person in the family and not worry so much about bills that need to be paid and, and expenses and, and so forth. And uh, what the, what the J Fund does is provide for these families that need support at a time when, you know, they don't know what they're going to do. And so um, it's, it's been an experience and um, I've, Love the opportunity to be a part of it and help in any way that I can. Um, every year, Tom has a golf tournament down at TPC um, Sawgrass in uh, Punta Vedra. And I go every year, but my golf game sucks. <laughs> and I go and I play, and I don't want to necessarily embarrass myself but yeah, you know, I used to have a little cap that says, I humble myself for worthy causes, you know, and I let people know that I'm not there to win any kind of crystal or prizes or anything like that. I'm, I'm there for um, a worthy cause. And so um, uh, that's what I'm all about. And that makes you a winner, regardless of what your golf score is. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Well, Harry, this was great. I learned uh, so much, you know, about you. I didn't know you were a cook, first of all. I mean, I oh, didn't yeah, know. I'm from the South. If you're from the South, you have to know how to cook. I was going to say, what do you, what do you usually serve? Well, it's something, it got to be something good, I would think. Well, my fried chicken, you know, oh. people who know me love my fried chicken. I mean, I could run Popeye's out of business. Get out, really? <laughs> and, oh. Uh, potato salad. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, and the potato salad with the mustard in it. You know, oh, that's the best kind. From the south. Mm -hmm. um, cornbread. Uh, oh. <laughs> so, you know, there are people, you know, we have friends in Hawaii, and one of the things that they always request is when we come out there that we, uh, that I cook a meal. And the meal could be for like 30 or 40 people, mm. you know. So I spend all day in the kitchen, you know, frying chicken and making potato salad and stuff like that. So um, 
Yeah, it's one of those things that I enjoy. Um, my when I was young, and I sat in the kitchen and watched my mom uh, cook, and uh, she didn't use a recipe, and I don't either. And um, oh. my potato salad, you know, is just like what my mother would make for Sunday dinner. Mm. So very impressive. Yeah I, yeah, I never knew you had that talent. That's amazing. And yeah. you know, you spoke fried chicken. I mean, we love it in okay. our house. My husband, fried chicken, cornbread, potato salad, uh, the greens, yeah. uh, that uh, complete Southern meal. I mean, yeah. I, I, we put that out there, and oh my goodness, it goes so. You quick. know, if, if if the Giants had like a like a cook off or something like that, I'm I'm pretty sure there are other players who uh, cook. But I would love to be a part of that activity just to cook my favorite meal and um, be able to uh, taste whatever, let's say, a Michael Strahan, if he dared to get <laughs> in the kitchen and go against me, a Hall of Famer versus Hall of Famer, you know, I'd I, I'd, I'd love to do that if you ever speak with him, you know, just throw that little challenge out. Oh, that's uh, good. Yeah, they just just say something to the effect of, you know, Harry Carson has challenged you to <laughs> do a cook-off, you know, and, you know. If, I don't know if he can cook, though. But can he? Can exactly, he but, but the, the mere fact that I'm challenging him, he probably <laughs> would want to take a lesson or two and... Uh, just to save face, you, know, <laughs> you would you would just, school just to compete, just to compete against me. So well, I may I may have to drop that idea to to the marketing people because can you yeah. imagine that 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 could be a nice fundraiser? Yeah, to have a yeah. Hall of Fame cook off. Yeah, get some of the legends in there. Maybe even go up against some of the young guys. Yeah, and, and and you'd probably blow them away with your fried chicken recipe and your potato salad. Hey. I'm multi-talented when it comes to certain things. And cooking a nice Sunday meal is one of those things. So well, that's awesome. Maybe one day I'll get get a chance to taste some of it. Like I said, oh, I'm maybe, a big fried maybe, chicken fan. Maybe I can have maybe I can have my own little stand in the coaches club. Oh, that would work. Yeah. Fried chicken, potato salad, mac and cheese. <laughs> and, and, oh, you uh, make your own mac and cheese too? Yeah. Oh, Harry. I, I see you're getting weak. You're getting weak. I am. I am. Oh my Jeez. gosh. I got to tell my husband this. He's going to be like, get some of it, bring it home. Because these are all dishes he loves. And I yeah. love them too. Yeah. I never knew that about you. See that? You learn something new every day. Yeah. Hall of Fame yeah. football player, outstanding human being, a, a philanthropist, and a cook. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is well, just awesome. Uh, again, like I said earlier, my wife pimps me out sometimes when it comes but to- But it's for a good cause. It's for and you deliver. Cause. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a good husband, so I listen. Yes. yes. So I, I never say no, so. Yes, uh, key, key to that. So yeah. Harry, listen, this was wonderful. I can't thank you enough for the time, for all the insight. Congratulations again to you and to Maribel. Um, unfortunately, I won't be at the event, but I'm sure whatever stories she has to share are going to be well received as you, anything you share and uh, continued good luck to you with your endeavors, not just with TCJ fun, but everything you've got going on. Um, giant fans, it's not very often I get a legend on the program. So I want to thank the J fun for arranging this. I want to thank Harry for arranging this. And I want to thank you for tuning in to the Locked on Giants podcast. All right, Giant fans, that's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Giants podcast. Appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for making the Locked on Giants podcast your first listen every day. Don't forget, tomorrow we have the crossover show. Tony Wiggins, host of Locked on Jaguars, will join me as we get you ready for Sunday's game, Giants at Jacksonville. And uh, on Friday, it'll be another live edition of Locked on Giants live uh, going to have the entertainer on again. And I believe we're going to have bad dog as well. 
That was a big hit last week. So we're going to try and do it again for you because you asked for it. We deliver here on the Lockdown Giants podcast. So now that you're finished with the Lockdown Giants podcast, please make your second listen of the day, the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Ryan Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson give you the expert NFL analysis in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. So check it out today. All right, Giant fans, until tomorrow, my name is Patricia Trana. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you then.